Hi everyone, this is Ian Lamont, publisher of In 30 Minutes Guides and the Technology Cheat Sheets, including the Mac OS reference and cheat sheet. Today I'm going to be talking about navigating Mac OS. Uh, Mac OS used to be known as OS X. It's the operating system for Macintosh computers. And if you're new to them, or maybe uh, you're not so new, but you've always wondered what some of these icons and things at the top of the screen do, well, now is your time to, to learn. So it's pretty basic. When you go to a Mac, you'll have your desktop background. You'll usually see a dock. Um, I've actually modified my dock so it's on the right side of the screen, but sometimes it's on the bottom of the screen. Other people keep it on the left. I'll, I'll cover that in another video. But then you have all these icons and things at the top of the screen. And uh, basically, there's a couple very important icons and things that you should know about. And then there's some things that are maybe less important. So I'll go through them right now. The most important one that you should definitely know is the Apple icon, which is in the upper left corner of every single Mac OS. It never disappears. It's always there. Um, actually, it may disappear if you, if you go full screen on some applications, but you can always get it back. And it controls a couple very important things. So if you click on it, one thing it will show you is the stuff you've been looking at recently. So if you've been using a certain app or you've been looking at a certain document, you can just quickly go to, go to see it and open it up or open up the app from the recent items menu choice, okay? That's one thing. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can find out information about your Mac. So if you click that, it will show things like what type of Mac you have, uh, how much memory, uh, your display information, which version of Mac OS you are using. I'm using Sierra here, but actually, it, even if you're using an older version of OS X or a newer version of Mac OS, this will be the same. It'll show information like this, which may be useful if you need to figure out what sorts of hardware you have or if you need to upgrade or something like that. The other thing the Apple icon can do is it can open the App Store. You can sleep, restart, or shut down. You can log out as a user. If so, if you have other users using the same Mac, they can, they can log on too. Uh, I'm not going to do all these things because it would actually shut down my video, but uh, trust me on this, the, these all work. The very important option that I haven't covered yet is system preferences. And this is basically like looking under the hood of your Mac. You can control all kinds of things. So you can see all the options here. I'm not going to go into every single one, but if you wanted to like set up a printer, you could click on that. If you wanted to adjust some of the settings for your sound, you could click on that. If you wanted to change your display, uh, your display, uh, let's say the size of your display or the brightness, you could go to that. So these are very useful things to know. And from time to time, I go into system preferences to change something. Okay, so now we're back here. To the right of the Apple menu is the active app menu. So the active app right now is Finder. Finder is this thing. It basically helps you organize all the files and folders on your computer. And if you wanted to do something, like let's say that uh, there's this PDF here and I want to uh, you know, do something with it, I could go to Finder, File, and then I could um, you know, open it up. I could rename the file. So I could call it something else, uh, test, just call it test PDF. All kinds of things that you can do. But if, if I switch the application I'm using, like let's say I go to the text edit, it'll show a different set of options up here. So the menus will change. Some of them will have the same title, top level title like file or edit, but the options here are a bit different. Like I can export as a PDF, I can view, I can uh, do things to the text, I can show the font and whatnot. So this, this app menu up here, it's dynamic. It changes depending on which active application is in use. Over here is called the, the status menu. I've also heard people call it the status bar, but let's just call it the status menu for now. There's all of these obscure symbols, and you may be wondering what they do. Some of them are pretty obvious. For instance, this is the universal Wi-Fi symbol. I think everyone knows what it is. Here's the, here are the available Wi-Fi um, wi networks to me, including my own phone. So if I wanted to, let's say, to turn off my Wi-Fi, I'd just click, I'd select that. If I wanted to switch to a different Wi-Fi network, I'd select it and then enter the password, etc. So that's pretty straightforward. Bluetooth, you may recognize this as well. Uh, there's different... I, I have two devices hooked up right now via Bluetooth. That's the keyboard and the mouse. And then there's also things like I can send a file to a device and whatnot. This is the time machine icon. And this is the storage system for uh, your Mac if you have a hard drive attached to it. And actually, I haven't done it for a while, but there's different things that I can do, including configuring it. Sometimes you'll see icons for other applications that you've installed. So this is the Dropbox icon. And if I was updating something or, uh, or 
you know, downloading something to my desktop or use, doing some other uh, Dropbox action, this, this icon might change a little bit. There might be a check mark next to it or a, swir or a swirling blue arrows that show that it's, it's updating. This is a quick time. Let's take a, take a look at some of these other icons. They're important. This is display information. I can quickly open display preferences. For instance, if I want to uh, set the brightness of the display. So let's make it a little bit brighter. Or sound. I can switch between my headphones, which I'm using now, or I have a Bluetooth uh, speaker set up. can also adjust the volume up or down. Uh, the American flag here, actually, it's for the language I'm using. So I, I'm using an American-style keyboard, but sometimes I switch to another keyboard. I switch to pinyin, typing pinyin. This is Chinese characters. And I can switch that just by selecting it here in the status menu. I can also mess around with the keyboard preferences. Time, date, you can open this up and change your time zone or look at a calendar. And then this is a really important one. Uh, it's the search function. It's called Spotlight Search on your Mac. Click it once. There's actually keyboard shortcuts too, but the easy way to do it is just to use your mouse, click on it, and then you can start searching for something. So if I wanted to find an app, like let's say I wanted to find um, uh, Numbers, which is the Macintosh spreadsheet program, I just type it in and it shows up. It also shows different files and maybe other applications that I have that have numbers in the name, and I could choose those if I wanted to. Okay. And then uh, we have Siri. You can click on it and Siri will activate. I found that Siri's a little slow sometimes. What's today's date? I was thinking about it. It's Friday, March 31st, okay. 2017. Okay, thank you, Siri. I also use it to find people's addresses sometimes if I just don't have enough time to open up the uh, contacts application. And then here's things like notifications or stuff on your calendar that you can do, okay. So for more information on how to get the most out of the macOS operating system, check out the cheat sheet that we have for macOS available from in30minutes.com. Thanks so much for watching.